The name Namibia has recently become a significant talking point in Israel, sparking widespread curiosity and discussion. This surge in attention stems from Namibia's recent actions that have directly impacted the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, particularly in support of the Palestinian people, who continue to suffer under the ongoing Israeli military operations. The OMT news team investigated the matter to uncover the reasons behind Namibia's sudden prominence in this context and the implications of its actions on the broader geopolitical landscape. Namibia, a country in southern Africa, shares a border with South Africa, a nation that has been a vocal critic of Israel, especially following the Israeli government's declaration of war against Hamas after the events of October 7th, when Palestinian military operations shocked the region. South Africa has been at the forefront of international legal actions against Israel, being the first country to initiate proceedings at the International Court of Justice. ICJ against the Israeli state. Namibia's recent actions seem to align with this broader regional sentiment against Israeli policies. In a decisive move, the Namibian government barred the Portuguese-flagged MV Catherine cargo vessel from entering its territorial waters, suspecting that the ship carried military equipment and explosive materials intended for Israel. Namibia's Justice Minister Yvonne Dausab confirmed this action, stating that she had advised the relevant ministries to prevent the vessel from docking at Namibian ports. This decision was made in light of international obligations, particularly under the Genocide Convention and the recent advisory opinion issued by the ICJ, which holds Israel accountable for its actions in Palestine. The police investigation corroborated the suspicions, revealing that the MV Katrin was indeed carrying explosive material destined for Israel. Namibia's decision to block the ship was seen as a compliance measure with international law, reflecting the country's stance against being complicit in what it views as Israeli war crimes, crimes against humanity, genocide, and the unlawful occupation of Palestine. The ship, owned by the German company Concord Shipping, had sought permission to dock at Wolvis Bay, a strategic Namibian port, before continuing its journey, presumably toward the Mediterranean via the Strait of Gibraltar. This move by Namibia has drawn praise from human rights groups, who warned that allowing the vessel to dock would have implicated the country in severe human rights violations. The Economic and Social Justice Trust, ESJT, a human rights organization lauded the Namibian government for upholding international law and refusing to be complicit in what they describe as genocide. The chairman of ESJT, Herbert Yauk, expressed satisfaction with the government's decision, emphasizing the importance of adhering to legal and moral obligations on the international stage. The issue also touched on broader historical grievances, particularly Namibia's complex relationship with Germany. Earlier this year, former Namibian President Hage Geingob criticized Germany's decision to support Israel in the genocide case brought by South Africa at the ICJ. Geingob highlighted the inconsistency in Germany's stance, pointing out the contradiction of Germany's support for the UN Convention Against Genocide, including its atonement for the genocide in Namibia, while simultaneously backing what he referred to as the equivalent of a holocaust and genocide in Gaza. For the records, the genocide in Namibia, perpetrated by German colonial forces in the early 20th century, remains one of the most harrowing examples of European colonial violence in Africa. This dark chapter in history, often referred to as the Herero and Namakwa genocide, saw the systematic extermination of tens of thousands of Herero and Nama people between 1904 and 1908. The atrocities committed during this period laid bare the brutal realities of colonialism, where entire communities were decimated, lands were seized, and survivors were subjected to inhumane treatment in concentration camps. Over a century later, the echoes of this genocide resonate in the ongoing debates about colonial reparations and historical justice. Yet when one examines the modern-day treatment of Gaza by Israel, a striking parallel emerges one 
that raises uncomfortable questions about the consistency and moral integrity of Germany's stance on genocide and human rights. The German genocide in Namibia was a calculated and systematic effort to eradicate the Herero and Nama peoples who resisted German colonial expansion. Following the Herero uprising in 1904, German General Lothar von Trotha issued the infamous extermination order, declaring that every Herero, armed or unarmed, would be shot. This directive was carried out with ruthless efficiency, leading to the deaths of approximately 80% of the Herero population and 50% of the Nama people. Those who survived the initial massacres were driven into the arid Omaheke Desert, where many perished from thirst and starvation. The survivors were then interned in concentration camps, where they were subjected to forced labor, medical experiments, and further brutality. The genocide in Namibia was not merely an act of war. It was an intentional effort to erase an entire people from existence. Fast forward to the present day, and the situation in Gaza bears a disturbing resemblance to the tactics employed by colonial powers like Germany and Namibia. The Israeli military operations in Gaza, particularly during the repeated conflicts over the past two decades, have been characterized by widespread destruction, indiscriminate bombings, and the targeting of civilian infrastructure. Thousands of Palestinians have been killed, with many more wounded and displaced. The blockade imposed by Israel has turned Gaza into what many describe as an open-air prison where the population endures severe shortages of basic necessities, including food, water, and medical supplies. The humanitarian crisis in Gaza has led to accusations of genocide and war crimes against Israel, with critics arguing that the systematic targeting of civilians, coupled with the blockade, amounts to an attempt to erase the Palestinian people. The German response to Israel's actions in Gaza, however, has been marked by a striking hypocrisy. While Germany has expressed remorse and taken steps toward acknowledging its responsibility for the genocide in Namibia, its unwavering support for Israel in the face of allegations of genocide in Gaza presents a stark contrast. Germany has consistently backed Israel in international forums, including at the United Nations, where resolutions condemning Israeli actions in Gaza have often been met with German opposition or abstention. This support extends to the legal arena, where Germany has sided with Israel in cases brought before the International Court of Justice, ICJ, regarding Israel's treatment of Palestinians. This stance raises critical questions about Germany's commitment to the principles of justice and human rights. On the one hand, Germany has made efforts to atone for its colonial past, including a formal apology and financial reparations to Namibia. On the other hand, its support for Israel's actions in Gaza suggests a selective application of these principles, where historical guilt for the Holocaust and the unique relationship with Israel overshadow the need to address contemporary injustices. The reluctance to criticize Israel's policies toward Gaza despite clear parallels to the tactics of ethnic cleansing and genocide, suggests that Germany's moral compass is swayed by political considerations rather than a genuine commitment to human rights. Moreover, the argument that Germany's support for Israel is rooted in the legacy of the Holocaust, while understandable, does not excuse the failure to hold Israel accountable for its actions. The genocide in Namibia was a precursor to the atrocities of the Holocaust, and the lessons learned from both should compel Germany to take a firm stand against all forms of genocide, regardless of the perpetrator. The moral responsibility to prevent and condemn genocide should transcend political alliances and historical ties. By continuing to support Israel's actions in Gaza without demanding accountability, Germany risks undermining its credibility as a champion of human rights and justice. That is why Namibia's actions reflect a broader African stance against Israeli policies in the region, particularly concerning the treatment of Palestinians. So the country's decision to prevent the MV Catherine from docking is not just a reflection of Namibia's commitment to international law, but also a statement of solidarity with the Palestinian cause.
This stance is likely to have significant diplomatic repercussions, potentially influencing other nations in the region and beyond to reconsider their positions on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. As the situation evolves, Namibia's role in this complex geopolitical landscape will likely continue to draw attention and potentially inspire similar actions from other nations sympathetic to the Palestinian plight. Meanwhile, the diplomatic relations between Israel and Namibia are shaped by a complex history and the broader geopolitical context of the African continent's stance on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Established in 1994, four years after Namibia gained independence from South Africa, these relations are marked by a unique dynamic. Israel maintains an ambassador to Namibia, Dov Segev Steinberg, who resides in South Africa, reflecting the limited scope of direct diplomatic engagement. Namibia, for its part, does not have an embassy in Israel, but is represented by an honorary consul, Gil Dankner, based in Atlit, Haifa. The recent decision by Namibia to prevent the Portuguese-flagged MV Catherine cargo vessel, suspected of carrying military equipment for Israel, from entering its territorial waters has brought these relations into sharper focus. This action, which aligns with Namibia's broader stance on international law and human rights, has not only strained its diplomatic ties with Israel, but also highlighted the African continent's growing disapproval of Israel's actions in Gaza. Namibia's decision is emblematic of a broader African sentiment that increasingly views Israel's military operations in Gaza with deep concern, often equating them with acts of genocide and violations of international law. The African Union, AU, and several individual African states have been vocal in condemning Israel's actions, calling for an end to the violence and urging for the protection of Palestinian rights. Namibia, with its own historical experience of colonial violence and genocide, is particularly sensitive to issues of human rights and justice, which likely influenced its decision to block the MV Catherine from docking. This move by Namibia reflects a broader trend across the African continent, where many countries have been re-evaluating their diplomatic relations with Israel in light of its policies in Gaza. The African Union has historically supported the Palestinian cause, and many African nations have expressed solidarity with Palestine at international forums such as the United Nations. The growing perception in Africa is that Israel's actions in Gaza are not justifiable as self-defense, but rather constitute an oppressive military occupation that disproportionately affects civilians. The diplomatic rift between Israel and Namibia, therefore, must be understood within this broader context of African disapproval of Israeli policies. While Namibia does not have an embassy in Israel and its diplomatic presence is limited to an honorary consul, its actions resonate with a larger continental shift that could have long-term implications for Israel's relations with Africa. The absence of a strong diplomatic relationship with Israel means that Namibia likely perceives little to no consequence for its decision to prevent the ship from supplying Israel, especially when weighed against the moral and legal obligations Namibia feels toward the Palestinian cause. The African continent's view of Israel's actions in Gaza is increasingly influenced by a sense of historical justice shaped by the continent's own experiences with colonialism, apartheid, and the struggle for independence. This historical perspective has led many African nations to identify with the Palestinian struggle and to view Israel's actions through the lens of their own liberation movements. As such, Israel's actions in Gaza are often seen as a continuation of colonial oppression, making it difficult for African nations to remain neutral or supportive of Israeli policies. Namibia's stance, therefore, is not just an isolated diplomatic incident, but part of a broader African response to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. The decision to block the MV Catherine from docking is a reflection of Namibia's commitment to upholding international law and preventing complicity in what it perceives as war crimes and genocide in Gaza. This action also signals to Israel that its policies in Gaza are increasingly untenable in the eyes of the international community, 
particularly in Africa, where there is a growing demand for justice and accountability.